Hi, in this video I will demonstrate how to use Wall of Lights actions for Photoshop. Let's start taking a look at some examples first. With the starting image and making a manual mask like this, the result was this. And this is a quick variation. Let's go on with other examples. Okay, now let me close all of these images. Okay, now before installing the action file, let's open an image to work with. I'll be using this one. And there, is, there are a few things to check about the images. Uh, first thing, go to image here on the top, mode, and make sure your image is in RGB color mode and 8 bits per channel. Second thing, make sure that you're working on the English version of Photoshop. If you are not on the English version of Photoshop, there is a link in the help file that shows how to change it temporarily. Another thing, make sure that your image has a nice resolution. This is a 2000 pixel image and the action was test on image between 1000 pixel and more than 5000 pixels. Uh, make sure that at least one of these two parameters is in this range. Next thing to check here in the layers panel. Click the menu button here at the top right corner, panel options, and make sure that add copy to copy the layers and group is active like this. Click OK. Now we can install the actions file and the patterns file. So let's do it. Window action to open the actions panel. Let me delay the default actions. Click here the menu button at the top, load actions, and load the action file. Load it. Okay, these are the four actions correctly installed. Now for the patterns, go to Edit, Preset, Preset Manager, select Patterns as Preset Type. Let me delete the default patterns here. Click Load and load the Wall of Lights Patterns file. These are the three patterns correctly installed. Click done. Okay, last step before using the action is to mask the area of your character. So let's create a new layer here from in the layers panel at the bottom. And let's call it mask all lowercase like this. Then pick the brush tool. Any color. and paint over your character. This mask can be done in a lot of different ways. For, for example, also using the lasso tool or the pen tool. The important thing is that then you have a nice mask with transparency. I already have a mask here prepared. Okay, this is the mask. Let me rename it. Let's open the actions panel again. Expand it. This action is made of two main actions, which are setup and wall of light, and two other actions that are used later in customization phase. So the first action that we are going to apply is setup. Uh, before using it, make sure that you have only two layers in your file and that one of them is mask renamed all lowercase like this and the other one is background and it has a lock 
like this one here if you don't have a situation like this and for example you have a layer like this you can select the layer go to layers new background from layer and now you have a background layer okay now we are ready to apply the first action select it and click play here on the bottom of the actions panel the playback of this action is very quick and it creates this group called setup and we will use the layers inside of this group to define the patterns of bulbs of the wall of lights so let's open the group there are four layers inside but we are going to use only two of them pattern and design so pattern is this layer and basically we will use the pattern overlay layer style to define the pattern of bulbs and it's very simple to do double click the pattern overlay here and here you can modify the scale of the bulbs and make it small like this or bigger and also you can choose between three different patterns let's make let's make them more visible bulb one type two which is the default one and number three by choosing one of these patterns we are not deciding the size of the bulbs but the density because for example i could take the number three which at the beginning looks like the the biggest one and scale it down back to three and have a very dense kind of effect like this which simulates something like a tv led if we switch to the first pattern keeping the same size actually this is really too small we have this different kind of effect make sure to don't to not make these bulbs too small like two pixels because first thing it wouldn't give a nice result and also it could give some error messages let's keep the standard values for now make it a bit smaller okay other thing if your original image has a floor and you want the output of the action to have a floor too you can do it during the you had to do it during the setup phase but if your image doesn't have a floor you can go on to the next layer design so if your image has a floor select the pattern layer press ctrl t or command t on your keyboard and drag the lower bracket here you can see all the orange area will be the floor in the final image so we will position it here press enter on your keyboard to apply the transform other thing which is important about the pattern if you double click and open the pattern overlay panel you can also drag the pattern and reposition it you can use this feature to center the bulbs as you wish once done click ok okay this is everything for the pattern layer now let's unhide the design layer and basically this layer is what will be displayed on the wall of lights the default design is just this uh, stripe vertical stripe and you can modify it as you wish and you can also create custom designs already in this phase for example i could create a pattern like this okay so i created this new design that will be displayed on the wall of lights and to do it i duplicated the original design layer so not now what i have to do is to position the original layer here above and select everything and press ctrl e or command e on your keyboard to merge everything and when you do this make sure that at the end the layer is called design like this all lowercase okay now the setup phase is done and we can apply the wall of lights action this will create two new groups one the the main one which is wall of lights output and the color correction group 
Uh, the playback will take around two or three minutes depending on your machine and at the end a message will appear before playing the action select it open it in this way you can see the progress of the playback here on the scrolling bar select the action and click play okay the playback has finished click continue and close the actions panel first thing we need to do is to make some organize a bit the layers panel because after the playback it's a mess and to do it hold alt on your keyboard and click the arrow near the name of the main group wall of lights output then release alt or option on your keyboard and open the group again and as you can see now it's better organized and here we can see the result after the playback every image in general needs a bit of tuning after the playback uh, but it's really simple and quick to do. Now we will see in detail, starting from the bottom, each subgroups that contribute to create the final image. There are a lot of other subgroups and layers, but the customization is very easy because we are going to use only a part of them. So let's hide each subgroup starting from the top to see practically what each one does. Okay, starting from the bottom, the first layer we have is back panel, which is the yellow layer. And basically, this is the panel behind the wall of lights and it is the background of the wall. You don't need to do too much tweaking on this. The only thing that you can do is to modify its color by double clicking the thumbnail here. It's better if you keep a very dark color. Okay. The other thing you will notice that the layer has a mask which is muted by default and we will see how to use this mask later uh, while talking about the floor subgroup. Okay, then we have wall of lights which is the most important subgroup created by the action and it is also the only subgroup that needs a detailed explanation. Wall of lights and floor need some detailed explanation while the rest of the subgroups are pretty straightforward. But also this subgroup, no, no matter what, it has a lot of layers inside. It is really easy to customize because it has a control panel here, for example. You can notice it by the different color code of the layers. And so let's see everything that can be customized in this subgroup. Okay, the wall of light is made of four different intensity stages. Three, two, one. Each one of these subgroup, each intensity has a mask. To watch a mask of a layer, hold Alt on your keyboard and click the mask. Okay, now we can see the mask of intensity three. As you can see, it is the light design that we decided at the beginning and it's only a bit blurred. Let's see the number two. As you can see, this one is the same one, but it's more blurred. One and zero. Okay, let's go back to the first mask. The first thing that we need to do when we start in a customization phase, and it's very, very important, is to decide the blur of each one of these masks. To do it, double click the mask to open its property panel. And here we can modify the feeder parameter and make it less blurred, for example. Okay, let's see the original image and decide how much this intensity tree is blurred. Let's do the same also for the other layers. This one, which is 50 by default. Let's try to lower it down a bit. Okay, better. Another very important thing, uh, as you notice here, we have above the feeder parameter a density parameter and you can use this value to make the mask affect less the layers inside so zero percent the mask is not working at all and, and you can see that it's white here 50 percent so it's working at 50 percent here and here we have a full mask so let's try to lower the density a bit also, you can mute one of these masks by holding shift on your keyboard and pressing the mask channel. 
Now the mask is muted and we can fully see the layers inside. Okay, now we will see two ways of customizing this mask. The first one is manual and the second one is by using the action update design, which is this one. Let's start with the manual way. To do it, select the first layer, the first mask, right click it and delete it. Then hold Alt or Option on your keyboard and press here on the bottom of the layers panel to create a new black mask channel. As you can see, this mask totally hided the Intensity 3 subgroup. Now hold Alt on your keyboard again and drag this mask to the other intensities. Okay, now we have totally turned off our wall of lights and we are going to manually paint it. Select the brush tool, a white brush, and this time you can select a softer brush and manually paint the design that you want to display on the wall of lights. Okay, now since this is a new mask, also the feature parameter has been reset to zero. Okay, we have set the feature parameter. Now the image looks strange because the other intensity are not affecting the final image. Now let's clone this mask to intensity number two. Okay. This requires more feeder. Also, I'm going to manually paint some of the bulbs with a lower opacity, something like 50%. The nice thing about manually painting this mask is that this gives full control over the final design that you want to achieve. Okay, let's repeat the step for the next intensity stage. and also intensity zero. Okay, this is how you can manually paint the design on the wall. Another way to do it is to use the update design action and let's see how it's done. Create a new layer anywhere in the layers panel and it's not important how you name it. The important thing is that you keep it selected. And here we can create our new design on this layer by using any method. So let's do it. Okay, this is the new design that I want to use on the wall. The only thing that I need to do is to select the layer, select the update design action and click play. Okay, as you can see now the design is updated. So let's go back to the default state we had at the beginning to do it. I will delete the design that I just made. Go to setup, select the design layer, the original design layer, and apply this action again. Okay, let's adjust the feeders very quickly. Okay, now that we have seen how to use the four masks, next important thing is that you can equalize the various intensity stages by simply modifying the opacity of each subgroup. So for example, if in intensity two is too much bright, I could simply drag down the opacity here. Third and very important customization method for, uh, for the wall of light is customizing intensity three. Intensity 3 is the only subgroup that which is different by the other subgroups because it is provided of, the, of a control panel. You can notice here that tune blurs and tree brightness contrast uh, has a different color code. The violet color in this action means that these layers are made for color correction or control over the image in general. So the first violet subgroup is tune blur. Let's open it and let's hide the subgroup to see what it does. Basically, these are the blurs around each bulb and there are six layers. The bottom one is the more blurred. 
and the first one is the one that has the less blur so what you need to do in every image is basically once the phase of the four masks is done is to tune these blurs so to do it open for example the first blur and here you can modify the gaussian blur so for this specific image i'm going to reduce all of these blurs a bit okay and the possibility to change this hello this blur around the bulbs is very important because this permits you to create many different kind of walls for example if it's a um, tv led like wall which has really tiny bulbs uh, with a high density it's better to use very low gaussian blur values while if you have a big blur uh, big bulbs uh, with a low density it's better to use higher values of gaussian blur here other thing that can be modified here is the opacity of these layers and the blending mode try normal screen soft light overlay color dodge and linear dodge and find the best solution for your image uh, or for the effect that you want to achieve one thing to remember is that if you're using linear dodge add as blending mode see this icon near the layer this means that if you're using linear dodge as blending mode and, and the layer has this icon, it means that you should use not the opacity parameter, but the fill parameter, because it works best with the layers below. You don't need to do it if you're using screen, but if you're using color dodge or linear dodge add, it's better to use fill. Okay, let's move on. Close the tune blurs group. I could also hold alt on my keyboard and close it this way so that if I open it again it's organized. Next layer is tree brightness and contrast. First thing to do before using this layer is to watch its mask which now is this one and double click it and modify here the feeder parameter. And here we want to have a situation similar to this. Okay, now that it's done now double click the icon of the layer and here you can modify the brightness of and contrast of the wall so for example i could make it brighter or darker this is one option to make the wall brighter another way is to use the next layer which is three randomize and what this layer does is basically to randomize the intensity of it of the bulbs inside the intensity tree group and this gives a very interesting result which is this by default this layer is set to vivid light 30 percent but another blending mode that works very well is overlay okay let's leave it like this and last thing about this layer it has a gaussian blur that can be modified for what regards all the other yellow layers of the wall of lights they are not very important just try to unhide them one by one and see what each one does doing it you'll be able to fine tune the wall of lights uh, as you wish here in intensity 3 there is a layer which is hidden by default which is a 3c and you can unhide it it basically makes the bulb white you can modify its opacity otherwise they are not fully white last information about the wall of lights is that also intensity 2 and intensity 1 are provided of randomized layers okay this is all for this subgroup we can go on with the next one which is floor but first uh, we will make a list of customization methods that can be used uh, with the layers created by these actions these customization methods are really important because there are only six and they can be applied to the majority of the layers of the layers tree. Okay, let's start with the list. We have already seen some of these customization method, methods. The first one is using the mask that every layer is provided of. Uh, it can be a normal layer or also a group. 
Basically, you can use the mask channel to hide or reveal parts of a layer or a group. To do it, select the mask channel, a brush, and then select between a white or a black color. A black color will hide some parts of a layer. Let's set the opacity to 100% here. Black color will hide parts of a layer and a white color will reveal them. And basically you can use this feature to fine tune every layer. Next thing is that some masks can be double clicked and they have a feeder parameter here and a density parameter here and both can be very useful. Third customization method is modifying the opacity of the layers and groups. And remember that if you're using linear dodge as blending mode and the layer has this icon with two squares, you should use fill instead of opacity. Customization method number four is changing blending mode and trying to experiment. If it's a bright layer, try blending modes that add. And if it's a dark layer, try blending mode that subtract. Fifth customization method is that some layers are provided of smart filters. For example, here Randomize 3 has a Gaussian blur and you can double click the smart filters and edit them. Sixth thing, very important, is manual transform and distort. Some layer has to be positioned manually, but all the layers can be repositioned, scaled and distorted to suit your needs. When doing it, make sure that the layer is not locked to the max channel. Let's make an example. I will open the floor subgroup floor shadows as you can see these three layers has this little hint in their name position manually and also you will notice that they, they are not locked to the mask channel here is a lock with the mask channel and here is a layer that is not locked this means that this layer is able to slide underneath the mask channel and it can be useful in various situations so when you are applying a transform to a layer, make sure just that it's not locked like this. Okay, now that we've seen these six customization methods, the, the rest of the layer tree is, is easier to understand. Let's close the wall of lights. And open the floor subgroup. Here, starting from the bottom, we have floor color. And here, what you can do is double click the thumbnail and modify the color of the floor. Another thing that can be done is to show the original floor of your image if it's suitable to do it. Just need to hide this layer and then select the layer back panel, hold shift on your keyboard and unmute the mask by clicking on the mask. And here you have the original floor. Then we have floor effects which are the gradients and the light effects on the floor. This is really easy to use. The first three are three simple gradients. And here you can modify opacity, try different blending modes, and also modify the gradient overlay. Then we have floor lights, which are these. And also here you can modify blending mode, try different opacities, modify the Gaussian blur and also apply transforms to them. For example, I unlock this layer, which is very big. Okay, and above we have the two refraction layers. And one nice thing to do with these four layers is once you have done the design on the light wall, is to paint the mask of these layers with a black brush, with a soft black brush, and hide the light effects in unnecessary parts. Okay, next we have the floor reflections. Also here, blending mode, opacity. The second one has also a Gaussian blur. And one important thing to do with these two layers, these two reflection layers, during every customization phase, it's better to adjust the perspective of these two layers to match it with your original image. To do it, select one of them, press Ctrl T. And here is the layer, and now we will modify its perspective. To do it, uh, right click, select perspective, and then drag from the bottom corner. 
okay this is a more realistic perspective for this image let's do something similar with also the other layer and remember that also here you can use the masks of uh, the groups and also the opacity parameter of the groups okay now let's open floor shadows as seen before this layer contains three layers that has to be positioned manually and basically these are the shadows underneath our character the first one let's select it press ctrl t on your keyboard as you can see this one which is the silhouette defined by the mask layer at the beginning we position it we also can apply transforms and distortions rotations to make it fit with the image then we can modify its opacity here now it's more visible and also it's gaussian blur but this value is working for this shadow now shadow number two it's another shadow the difference is that this one is a sphere is a big soft shadow and this should have a lower opacity than shadow number one and a higher value of blur number three is the foothold shadow which is very small let's press ctrl t and basically you can position this shadow underneath the foot of a character or where he's touching the ground and also this layer can be distorted rotated and scaled to match the image so let's rotate it a bit if you keep pressing ctrl on your keyboard and you drag one of the corners you can distort a layer okay we set its opacity then we press ctrl j or command j on our keyboard and we can duplicate this and we can duplicate this layer as many times needed so let's move the second one on the second foot okay and the shadows are done next we have floor brightness and contrast which is a simple adjustment layer that lets you adjust the brightness and contrast of only the floor okay let's close the floor group next we have background post effects which is a simple control panel for the background and here you can modify the levels of wall and floor together the next adjustment layer which is just a hue saturation is very important because modifying the hue value you can totally change the color of the wall okay let's leave it like this also change the saturation if needed okay let's close also this group next one is foreground let's open it very easy to use the first layer is fg main which is the main foreground this above this layer there are three adjustment layers fg color levels and hue saturation as you can see this layer have a narrow near the icon this means that they are clipped to foreground main and basically they are affecting only the foreground main layer if for mistake you lose the clipping mask and the layer becomes like this you can right click the layer and select create clipping mask to restore it okay so we have the main layer and here there is not much to customize just the mask here if you want to hide some parts of it above that we have a color filter which is orange by default and this is important if you change the color of the of the wall behind using the hue saturation adjustment layer for example if you make the wall blue you will want to change also this one to a blue color next we have levels and here is a simple levels adjustment layer for the foreground and at last hue saturation then as you can see the main group the main subgroup foreground has a mask too and also this one can be used to hide or reveal parts of the foreground next layer another blue layer this means that it, it is related to the foreground it is sharpens let's unhide it 
There is not much to customize inside of this subgroup. It's made of three other layers, sharpen one, two, and details. And here you can modify the opacity of these three layers. Also try to switch from overlay to soft light bending mode. And as you can see, details here is in linear dodge and it should stay like this. And one thing that you can do to adjust the amount, the amount of sharpens and details is to select the main group and modify here the opacity which by default is 60%, you can set it to 100 or less. Next is Highlight and Shadows, also this one is really easy, unhide each layer one by one to see what each one does, and also here you can modify Opacity, Blending Mode, and the different layer styles that each one of these layers have. For example, this one has an Inner Glow and a Satin, this one a Bevel and Boss, satin and a gradient overlay. Let's move on to overlay effects. Open the group. Okay, here at the bottom we have the subgroup smoke, which is this one. It's made of these three layers. And here you can modify the, opac uh, the opacity, which is 20% by default. Let's try to 10%. I'm selecting with control all of the three layers and changing the opacity all together here. And here you can experiment with different blending modes such as lighten, screen, overlay and soft light. Also notice that each one of these layers is provided of a max channel that can be customized. Next we have light effects. Let's open the group. And here we will start from the top. The first one, the first layer is glow, which is this one. It's a smart object and we can double click it to see what there is inside the smart object. Let's see it. It opens in a new tab and this is the image that we have inside the smart object. And you can see in this image that there is our custom design. Let's close the smart object and here you can modify opacity. Try different blending modes such as lighten, overlay, soft light, screen and also modify it's Gaussian blur okay let's take a quick look also to the next layer which is other blur it, it is another special effects here it is using the fill what we have here it's a layer similar to glow let's see it this one but here we have only a motion blur active and a radial blur which is not active by default and with the motion blur what you can do is modify the angle to have an effect like this or horizontal motion blur effect or also you could turn off the motion blur and activate the radial blur to have this other kind of effect and here you can modify the parameters the values of the radial blur okay as you can see these two layers has our custom design inside. So if we change our design after the actions playback, we will need to update also these two layers. To do it, let's unhide only the glow layer, select the update FX action and click play. Basically, after a customization session, you should always update these two effects by applying this action. So let's do it. Okay, the effects are now updated. Let's take a look at them. This is glow and this is other glows. Okay, we are going to use only glow for this image at 45% or 50. Okay, next we have a flare, unhide it. And also this layer, it's written that it should be positioned manually. And to position this layer, the best way to do it is to open the smart filters, the lens flare, double click it. And now from this panel, you can position your flare and also modify the brightness. And also here you can modify fill or opacity and modify the blending mode. Next we have the sparkle flare layer. Let's unhide it. It's a simple layer like this. And like for the foothold player, we are going to position this. 
anywhere that we want scale it rotate it and i'm going to modify the fill a bit this layer works very good with linear dodge or color dodge or also screen it has a gaussian blur and also a color overlay to colorize it so let's duplicate it a couple of times okay you can position as many floor as you want on your image next we can go on with the next layer which is vignetting very simple layer a simple vignetting and here you can modify the opacity then we have a grain layer and also here you can modify the opacity to make it more or less visible okay let's close the overlay effects and open the post effects this is a simple control panel for the final color adjustment and to blend all the elements together there is a global contrast and you can modify its opacity here a colorized layer and hide it and with this layer you basically can colorize your image and also modify its opacity here then we have a hue saturation and lastly a level adjustment layer okay we are done with the main group let's take a look at the color corrections open the group as you can see here we have 15 color corrections and five black and white color correction Let, let's take a look at each one of them okay and once you choose one of the color corrections if it's too much aggressive you can modify its opacity here to tone it a bit down and for the single layer color options you can use the opacity of the layer and for the group and for the grouped color options you should use the opacity of the group also thanks to the opacity parameter you can mix together two or more color corrections okay the very last thing let's take a quick look to another example this one and as you can see this other image doesn't have a floor and the pipeline to use the workflow to use when an image doesn't have a floor is to apply the action normally and then just to hide the floor subgroup and one, once it's done update the effects and nothing more and this is all for this tutorial thank you for watching